dear students so in the previous sessions we have discussed about the newton's laws of motion and the inertial frames in which they can be applied without making any modification also we have seen that whenever we are applying newton's laws to non inertial frames of reference we have to make suitable modification by introducing some forces which are known as fictitious or pseudo forces later we will be applying these concepts in real life problems and before we discuss the applications of newton's laws let's spend some time on reviewing or revising our idea of standards and units so you know that we are using physical quantities like length mass time etc to define every quantity that we meet usually in our day to day life we can all our physical quantities in measure and measure it നമ്മൾ വ്യത്യസ്ത സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡുകൾ ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് നിങ്ങൾ നിങ്ങളുടെ പ്ലസ് വൺ ക്ലാസ്സുകളിൽ അല്ലെ അതിന് മുൻപുള്ള ക്ലാസ്സുകളിലൊക്കെ പഠിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള കാര്യമാണ് സെവൻ ബേസ് ക്വാണ്ടിറ്റീസ് ഹാവ് ബീൻ ഡിഫൈൻഡ് വിത്ത് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് സിസ്റ്റംസ് ഓഫ് യൂണിറ്റ്സ് അലോങ് വിത്ത് ദ ഡിസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ഈച്ച് ഓഫ് ദീസ് യൂണിറ്റ്സ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ആക്സെപ്റ്റഡ് ബൈ ദ സയൻറ്റിഫിക് കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി സോ എ ലാൻഡ് man of science should be able to use proper units of each of these physical quantities depending on the context for example when we are dealing with very small distances say for example the size of the nucleus of an atom we prefer to use the unit fermi or femtometer when we deal with the size of atoms we prefer to use the unit angstrom which is equal to 10 to the power minus 10 meter when we use to measure maybe very small sizes as that of the radius of a capillary tube we prefer to use millimeter whereas if you have to measure the length of a ma bar magnet in the lab we naturally choose centimeters and if it is the height of a building we prefer to use either feet or meters and if it is the distance between two towns we may be using kilometers or if it is the distance from one planet to another planet or from the sun to the planet we prefer astronomical unit and if it is distance between stars we prefer light years or parsec so you have seen that even though in all these different cases that i have mentioned here the quantity the physical quantity is distance we are using different different units which is is suitable or which is convenient in that particular context so it's always good that we have a broad idea about the different physical quantities the different systems of standards and the different units they are used to describe each of these physical quantities it's a matter of uh, general knowledge nowadays that every physical quantity has got several units and in your uh, classes as i have mentioned you have learned about different systems of units like we had the uh, mk system we have the cgs system we have the uh, fps system okay and so on and as a common understanding among the scientific community for uniformity nowadays we are using the international system of units better known as the si system international si system so even though uh, we are following the si system it's always good that uh, you try to understand 
the different uh, quantities expressed in various units like the SI, the CGS and the conversion between CGS to SI and vice versa and uh, some uh, units which are used in the old FPS system because you may come across a number of textbooks or literature where maybe other units are used. It's always good that you understand. For example, uh, the pound, okay, the pound or the slack, all these are different. Pound, uh, okay, sometimes is refers to a unit of mass and uh, sometimes, uh, okay, uh, we are using uh, units like feet, miles, slug, etc. So see that you try to understand what are the relation between all those things. Now, uh, before uh, we go to the next topic, let me just give you an overview of what are things uh, you should be taking care of. So one thing you have to keep in mind is that these several systems of standards and the units are uh, in use just merely as a fa for uh, the sake of convenience okay and the standards that we are using you know okay you no know, uh, when you have to measure something we are using some standards the standards that we are using in defining a physical quantity can be broadly classified into two one is known as the man-made standards one category is known as man-made standards and the other category is known as natural standards so you can clearly understand what's the meaning of man-made and natural standards. So the man-made standards, for example, you have learned that uh, the quantity, uh, the unit of uh, or the standard of distance, the meter. Now we are uh, using the SI unit of distance as meter or SI unit of length as meter. And the definition of meter, meter is accepted as a standard. Okay, the definition of meter has seen a number of changes over uh, centuries. So initially, the meter was defined in terms of the distance from the equator to the North Pole, distance from the equator to the North Pole along the great circle, along a great circle. So uh, exactly it was defined as the one ton millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole of earth along a great circle a great circle is uh, any circle drawn on a sphere which will be concentric with the center of that sphere that is known as a great circle for example equator is a great circle and that was a very old definition in use uh, almost in 1793 and all and you know you have learned that later the meter was again redefined in terms of a standard, a physical standard, which is known as a prototype. A sample was kept in the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in Paris, Severus in Paris. And uh, you can see here the diagram, uh, okay, the uh, diagram that you see on the slide is uh, showing a platinum bar. Okay, so this is a platinum bar. And this uh, bar is made up of an alloy of platinum and iridium. And two fine lines were engraved. Two fine lines were marked on this platinum bar. And the distance between two these two fine lines was defined as exactly one meter. So uh, the this platinum iridium bar was preserved at a uh, proper temperature and pressure without causing any expansion without causing any rusting at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures and several uh, see copies of this particular prototype was circulated to several countries where uh, the country will be or the nation will be keeping its sample and it's again copies will be made and these copies will be just distributed to uh, their own okay uh, see weights and measures department uh, means uh, the legal metrology department maybe you know that and okay our state or each state is having what is known as legal metrology department okay uh, who is responsible for maintaining the standards of uh, all these uh, balances that we are using in grocery shops in other uh, okay uh, just uh, shops and all so uh, this prototype scopies were distributed all over the okay, world and that was used for very long time. So the meter was uh, redefined in terms of the 
distance between two very fine lines on a platinum iridium bar and later it was understood that so this is one example okay the, the, what i told you right now is one example of what is known as a man-made standard and a man-made standard has got a lot of disadvantages because it's very difficult to maintain to maintain the precision of these standards because uh, okay like you have seen that no okay um, we are taking copies from one to the next and next on to the next so always there is uh, okay a lot of chance of error and also depending on the temperature and the pressure at which these things are maintained anyway they are metals okay so the distance between the two fine lines will get fussy fussy okay it will uh, be causing a lot of uh, errors uh, in due course with the passage of time so later with the advent of uh, modern technology the meter the standard one meter was re again redefined in terms of the wavelength wavelength of certain emissions from krypton 86 krypton uh, see uh, there are there are emissions from krypton uh, 86 86 is the mass number uh, okay, it's an isotope of krypton and uh, it was redefined in terms of the krypton 86 uh, wavelength so that is uh, with the advent of uh, what you call uh, the uh, what you call uh, see uh, lasers you know okay lasers and uh, other atomic spectra so it was redefined in terms of wavelength of uh, certain emissions from krypton uh, so uh, again uh, just uh, uh, for example when you keep uh, the krypton 86 atom in vacuum uh, it will emit uh, see an orange red line it will emit an orange red line due to some uh, de-excitation between the atomic uh, energy levels and uh, uh, one meter was defined uh, as uh, see one meter was defined as some one six five zero so there are some exact numbers one six five zero seven six three point seven three okay uh, times the wavelength of this krypton krypton uh, 86 lambdas so uh, lambda you know okay, you know see it's uh, just represented as uh, uh, the complete one complete wavelength okay so the uh, one meter was defined so this is quite some quite very small and uh, one meter was defined as this many times okay uh, the wavelength of krypton 86 so you know that now it is uh, quite uh, seemingly quite precise compared to uh, the distances between uh, the two fine marks on the platinum iridium bar but again with the advent of laser technology more and more okay accuracy was uh, crept uh, was coming into the definition of meter and uh, later it was defined in terms of the length of the path traveled by light in vacuum during an interval of one by you can see that what is this uh, okay number this is nothing but the velocity of light in vacuum okay so the length of the path or the distance traveled by light in vacuum during an interval of 1 by 2997924588 of a second okay well etrana oru second inde itrayum valare cheriya oru amshathinullil light vacuumilude shunyathilude sanjarikkunna dooram etrayano adiniyana endayittu define cheyathu meter nu redefine cheyappettu adu light inde velocity exact aayittu measure cheyappettappol aa velocity ude terms ile okay so light the velocity and what i this is nothing but the value of c okay meter per second so then in that uh, okay velocity automatically the uh, see the meter is also has been defined okay so uh, now most of the base quantities have been defined in terms of uh, natural standards but natural standards are so these are examples of natural standards is okay natural standards and examples are these are natural standards and this particular thing is an example of one man-made standards so uh, just uh, only you know to understand how the different standards and units are evolved with the uh, usage and with the time uh, we just mentioned about the basic unit of distance or length namely the meter similarly you can see the units of time the unit of time also have gone a number of uh, definitions and revisions and now we are uh, using or now we are uh, defining the second the unit of time the unit of time which is nothing but a second in terms of uh, uh, what is known as uh, atomic clocks 
okay uh, in terms of uh, some hyperfine transitions you will understand about uh, this uh, hyperfine transitions in your uh, modern physics classes later anyway remember uh, we are okay the time standards are nowadays uh, measured in terms of uh, what is known as the transitions in the atomic level transitions in what is known as an isotope of cesium known as cesium 133 and um, these measurements are what is known as atomic clocks cesium clocks or it is known as atomic clocks about ee cesium 133 at the hyperfine transitions ne aadharamaakkiyulla samayathinte definitions ne yana sadharana nammal atomic clock gal ennu parayga so is highly precise cesium clock no atomic clock no kanu bilikya samayathinte ettom accurate aayittulla definitions ne vendi nammal ubhayikkunnathu cesium thinte chila atomic transitions aanu okay so uh, nowadays a more accurate measurement had come up but this is one very common thing that was being used for a while okay so that is the thing similarly the unit of mass we are discussing just uh, three base quantities the length mass and time the unit of mass as a unit of mass has also undergone a number of revisions so it is good that you just read the section uh, okay 2.3 so i just assign you to uh, just read section 2.3 in your reference textbook klepner uh, 2.3 to get an overview of how different systems were evolved okay and uh, see uh, what is the advantage of each of the system also uh, okay uh, the textbook is giving uh, some idea regarding the several systems of units uh, just as a matter of our requirement for understanding our topics later and in doing problems okay uh, in the later part of the textbook uh, so i suggest you to just go through the section 2.3 completely okay and uh, i think uh, Uh, we will discuss about the applications of newton's laws uh, in a separate video so i conclude this short session uh, see that you go on referring to the textbooks uh, as i mentioned okay we are having uh, see uh, certain gap between two hours as per our available time in the time table allotted so be careful that you maintain the okay continuity by um, constantly Uh, in touch with your uh, reference textbook that is clapped now okay so we show all the best and i will continue about uh, the applications of newton's laws in a separate video hereafter okay thank you